What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overload here. So we're talking about a few different horror topics in this video here today. We'll be talking about Saw X. We'll be talking about A Quiet Place Day 1. We'll be talking about Nightmare on Elm Street. We'll be talking about Scream 7. And then we'll be talking about Maxine. So just to kick it off with Saw X. Saw X is going to have a very good opening it would seem. According to Vink360 who again is one of the more reliable individuals over on that Saw subreddit. They said... Uh, that how the film opens is one of the few things I know about the how the movie unfolds. And I think it's a very cool way to open. I wouldn't want to ruin anything for people. It's always fun to see how they open these movies on opening night. I wish I didn't know this myself, but I found out in a pretty unconventional and unexpected way a while back i'll talk about it after the movie releases i think it's a great way to open and seems to really set the tone for the movie they're making made me really interested and excited in what they were doing with this one now that of course gets me intrigued and gets my mind going as to what this opening could be because those are some solid enough compliments about the opening without being overly spoilery about what happens in the opening i have no idea how to predict this opening at all based on what we have seen from the marketing so far but i could see the film opening in a certain way based on what we know about the timeline of this project since we know that saw x is taking place after the events of saw in between the events of saw and saw 2 perhaps we are going to see the film open right after John left Adam at the end of the first movie. Perhaps we will see his next actions after leaving Adam screaming for his life in that darkness. That's just a guess based on how, again, we know it's set in between one and two. And I wouldn't mind seeing an opening sequence like that. Imagine that being the very first thing we see. We see Tobin Bell back in the iconic look he had from that original film after he spent most of it lying on the ground having most of us believe he was dead and the very first thing we're seeing in Saw X is him walking away from the slam door we can hear Adam still screaming and we just get to see what he did next after that what specifically did he do next how did he end up out of that bathroom scenario with with adam we know he walked out but what did he do afterward maybe that's how saw x will open maybe we'll get to see the aftermath of that but diving into a quiet place a quiet place day one is having a test screening this wednesday and i was able to get one of you in so congratulations enjoy and report back with all the spoilers and your thoughts on the film of course this movie is set in between the same or it's set in the same world as a quiet place one and a quiet place two we know this it's taking place on day one <laughs> it's expected to dive into the origins of these creatures the film diverges from the abbott family story and follows a woman played by the incredible lupita Nyong'o as she navigates the horrific first moments of the alien invasion in the loudest city in the world new york city uh, now with it diving into the creature's origins a little bit further this can either damage those creatures mystique or it can improve it but we'll just have to see how it's executed again the test screening is happening on wednesday i know many of you are still asking me can i send you the link to rsvp i will say that again i already got one of you in the link seems to be dead now so i will go ahead and remove those postings from my social media account so i can stop getting messaged about it but again i will let you know what one of you thought about the film because i got you in to see it on wednesday hope you enjoy it report back with all the spoilers let me know what you thought about the movie now mark Patton, who plays jesse in nightmare on elm street 2 put out on instagram a post of the freddy's revenge opening with the caption big news coming for me and my nightmare fans jesse's gonna rise up well soon you'll see now remember i said that one of the rumored pitches which I have on good good authority actually is indeed one of the pitches involved in that bidding war that took place earlier this year. One of the pitches to get Nightmare on Elm Street revived was doing a modern take on Freddy's Revenge. You would have a female director. Obviously, you'd have a new Freddy Krueger. Robert England would just be involved to help find the new Krueger actor. And Krueger would have a gloved arm instead of the traditional one we've seen in the past that's one of the pitches for a new film but i doubt Patton is talking about that because i've seen the rumors also of a 4k re-release of these films but maybe it's just happening for the original it could be happening for the whole entire franchise now i think Patton is simply referring to some unannounced upcoming merch of sorts and he can't talk about it yet 
If it's a new film with Jesse back in a legacy role, I'll be fine with that too. I just wanted to bring this up because I saw one of you mention it in the comments of my other video. So I went snooping into that. And I don't think he's necessarily referring to a new movie as much as he might be referring to some upcoming new merch that would revive the Jesse character and have Jesse be talked about due to the fact that there's new merch on the way. Now, Scream 7, we know, is in the works. And several fans are hoping to see Sydney Prescott return in a prominent way while others just want to see her back with no substantial justifications besides she's Sydney Prescott and she must be in every movie regardless. We watched a movie, however, proposed something rather interesting that I wouldn't be against in one of their latest videos and I'll link it down in the description of this video of mine. Blackbird, as we know, has been given its own separate project listing on Production Weekly after it was thought to be Scream 7's working title. We watched a movie had this idea of Blackbird somehow still being a Scream movie in the Screamverse, but it's a spinoff film for Sidney Prescott to be targeted by a Ghostface killer with none of the core four involved in the project. Now, I highly doubt this is the case, but I gotta say that would be epic. And it would clear up a lot of the issues I could see with Scream 7 and Sydney's return. A solo film for Sydney that's happening simultaneously during the events of 7. And let's say her movie ends on a cliffhanger to when she joins the cast of 7 for the events of what happened in that movie. And you could basically watch the solo Sydney movie and then turn 7 on and watch her show up just after the events of Blackbird to join the final stand in Scream 7. This would eliminate the that she didn't have enough screen time concerns for me because I'm, I'm struggling to see how everybody's going to be developed properly going into Scream 7. It gives opportunity for Sydney to breathe on her own without the other task of, of not jeopardizing the core four. And I just think it would be an epic concept to see having Sydney Prescott in a solo project. If you can come up with something substantial for her, have that bridge into her return in Scream 7. And if she's in Scream 7 for a limited amount of screen time, most people then would say, hey, that's OK, because you gave her a whole solo project that bridged into Scream 7. Now, I doubt that's going to happen, but I just wanted to say that was a very cool concept that we watched the movie came up with, and I'll leave a link to their video in the description. Now, jumping into this last thing here with Maxine. Some of you did point out that Maxine, of course, will be having a young actress in the film with a certain role for the project that I will talk about. We know that this is going to be following Maxine Minx in the 80s, trying to make it as an actress in Los Angeles, but there's going to be a killer on the loose. It's a whodunit. You're not going to know who the killer is, like how you knew who the killers were in X or Pearl. It's going to be a whodunit. Uh, we know Halsey's in it. We know Kevin Bacon's in it, and a whole other list of talented individuals. But there's a cast member on IMDb that was highlighted to me. Charlie Rowan McCain is cast as young Maxine. Now, many of you would argue that, oh, well, IMDb isn't reliable. Now, I have on good authority that this, in fact, is reliable. This cast, in any way, Charlie Rowan McCain is indeed going to play young Maxine. You will see a younger version of Maxine in the upcoming film. And yes, it isn't going to be diving into her backstory. I put out a tweet earlier this week saying that her line of, I will not accept a life I do not deserve. I put out a tweet saying that this line makes sense now. One of you asked, what didn't make sense before? Well, what didn't make sense before was the overall context of where this line came from. And that's what Maxine is going to give us a look at when you get to see the younger Maxine. I'm not going to say when she will show up in the movie, but yes, you will be seeing a younger version of Maxine that will shed some light on her backstory uh, with her father, I will say. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications and there's a video in the description. I'll have links on my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.